Dixon Technologies is the other stock that we should try and pull up for our viewers. Uh, new clients like Micromax uh, have helped Dixon Technologies uh, post uh, reasonably okay numbers in fourth quarter. The first third party electronics man manufacturer saw sip rise in washing machine division. What wasn't as assuring was the mobile phones vertical both, I mean, which uh, relatively new businesses though. Uh, overall, the top line seemed muted. Uh, let's get in Atul Lal. He's the managing director of the company. He joins us right now to take us through the numbers. Remember, don't look at it from a quarterly perspective. Uh, the year as a whole would be more important. Mr. Lal, uh, good morning and many thanks for speaking to us at Bloomberg Quint. How would you sum up your quarter operationally for a business like yours to show an, a margin growth of 140 basis points is quite commendable. But why is it that the revenue, number, revenue numbers for the quarter looked the way they did? Uh, you see, on the margin side and on the profitability side, I think uh, the performance is uh, good, very good. On the revenue side, uh, the, the revenues have not grown, primarily because of two reasons. One, the mobile business, there has been a degrowth in revenues because of some of our customers in mobile vertical not uh, doing very well. Uh, second, also a significant reason is that it is not an apple to apple comparison. Uh, in Q4 of last fiscal, a large part of our revenues came in from our excise free zone unit, wherein the excise duty were included in the inputs. However, in the last quarter of the current of, of, of 17 18 fiscal, uh, uh, this was not the case. The revenue is net of DST. So if you do a, an apple-to-apple -apple comparison, there is a growth. However, the growth is muted. So it's primarily because of mobiles uh, reason wherein uh, the growth is not taking place. On the profitability side, there is a significant growth. Just what I said, I, th I think the operational numbers really led to the bottom line numbers looking very robust. Uh, but the top line, right? I mean, for a company which is into growth, for almost all the brokerages and the analyst community which believes that you are on this juggernaut of uh, growth, it's continuing on the growth trajectory, the top line numbers. Uh, adjusted for uh, the, the one-offs or the, you know, apple to apple comparison that you spoke about as well. I think one concern that you are highlighting is that some of your customers in the mobile manufacturing division or the mobile space weren't in the best of shapes. Uh, would that uh, last for the near future as well? How has the scene been in quarter one? And if it is still looking subdued, for how long will it last? Uh, well, uh, in mobile business, uh, we are following two strategies. Uh, one is the new customer acquisition. So we have added new customer in the Q1 of this fiscal, a brand by the name of Tambo. And also one of our major customers, Juni lately is showing recovery. Uh, we are also in, in, in process of acquiring certain new customers. I cannot disclose the details at this point of time. Uh, however, please be rest assured the customer acquisition is on and is going to happen. The second thing is that in line with the base manufacturing program of the government of India, uh, we have made investments in the PCB lines. Uh, the lines and the machinery is in transit, and we are hopeful of installing it by July this year, uh, another couple of months. And from August, the profitability and the numbers are going to be much more robust. Even if you see the last quarter, although the revenues have gone down, but the profitability has, uh, has been sustained. In fact, there is a marginal growth there. That's because of a significant focus on the fixed expenses. So I'm very sure that from the next quarter onwards, mobile will be back on track. Capacity utilization level, has it gone up? Because I believe you started feature for manufacturing as well. So has it gone up from the 30 odd percent that it was probably around uh, Feb or March? Um, and two, I, th I think you gave us a brief hint, but uh, you, you, you expect to complete that acquisition or an, you know getting in a large customer um, in the first half of calendar year 18? We have about a month left. Yeah, we are fairly confident about it. Okay, and the capacity utilization? And the capacity utilization? Utilization? Uh, start, uh, capacity utilization will go up. Okay, 
What about what about the TV segment? You seeing higher OEM sales? I think you've been consistently ramping up the capacity as well. How has that side of the picture looked in quarter four? How is that likely to look in FY19? So the auto book in uh, consumer electronics is uh, extremely healthy. Uh, we expect a very very decent growth in consumer electronics on the LED television front. Uh, the first phase of backward integration has. Uh, has already been completed. Uh, the assembly of our LCM modules has started and it's one of the largest capacities in India. Uh, so uh, the, the the television business looks extremely robust uh, in the in the in the coming quarter. Uh, and also the, the twin cost that we were sustaining, uh, one of running both the units because we were in a transition mode from the to Kuti is going to come to an end by June end. So even the cost focus is going to be much higher. Interesting. Uh, somebody's written a note about their visit to your Tirupati facility and talking about how uh, the manufacturing scale out there can pick up. Uh, bec also because it gives you access to southern India where a lot of your competitors are not present because almost everybody has exposure only to northern India. Can you talk a little bit more about that? So Tirupati facility is uh, is going to be an extremely important industrial footprint for us. And uh, you're absolutely right that this gives us a significant additional advantage because most of the comparative uh, 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 competition is uh, having a northern India footprint. So it gives us a, a large logistics advantage. It uh, gives us a specific advantage for our south-based customers. Further, this facility is close to the port, with barely 130 kilometers from Chennai port. So it gives us access to the global markets. So it's a very important uh, uh, strategic footprint for us. I'll, I'll wrap up this interaction by what you believe FY19 could throw up. I mean, Q4, uh, Q4 notwithstanding, if I just look at what you've done, in FY18 at large, there has been a growth uh, on the top line. What do you expect FY19 to be like on the revenue front? Could we see about a 10-15% growth or am I being a lot more conservative than what you are? And if indeed the margin numbers look as good as they have in quarter four, are we to expect a significant bump up in the bottom line numbers for FY19 as a year? You see, we have always maintained and we have a huge conviction that we are going to be on a high growth path. Uh, we are going to be having growth of 20 25% uh, in our revenues and possibly a better number on our bottom line. Uh, we, are, we are very confident about this. So you are saying about 20 to 25% growth on the top line in FY19? That's right. And you would clock in a faster than that or a faster clip uh, bottom line number out there? Okay, let me tell you, an estimate suggests that you could probably do about 95 to 100 crores uh, in FY20 on the numbers on the bottom line. Is that a reasonable estimate? I don't want to give an absolutely forward guiding number, but uh, I think uh, it's being realistic. Not exactly, but it's being realistic. It's being realistic. Okay, great. Mr. Lal, we wish you all the best. Uh, hopefully, the mobile division also picks up steam for you and for your investors. Thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking to us at Bloomberg Quint.